John Norman, you look at the score, my friend. You probably think it was pretty easy last night, but up until that last couple of overs, reasonable, reasonably stressful for you, Pommies. Oh, mate, it was so stressful. And and actually, it felt, in fact, at the end of it, I, I felt, oh, I was exhausted. It was just so nervy from ball one, right until about the, until Glenn Phillips was out. So what was that? About 17th over. Um, it was a terrific game of cricket. There was some high quality bowling, some high quality batting, some pretty poor fielding. There was some drama. There was some uh, ebbs and flows. I thought England did well, but probably felt that they could have scored a couple more. I think it was just, it was an overpar target that they set us uh, New Zealand of 180. I thought Butler. That's the best I've seen him bat, but of course he was dropped badly by Mitchell, who does love. He does like dropping catches against England and uh, a tough one from Williamson. But he, he batted well. Hales, I thought, really, really played well. That over against Southie in the power play, that was a big over. So at the halfway stage, I was relatively happy. 60-40, I thought, in favour of England. Then they started well with the ball. Um, and if Murray Nally takes that catch and he takes that catch 999 times out of 1,000, then I think England are comfortable winners. But he didn't. And with five overs to go, um, I text Steve Harmison and Neil Manthorpe. Uh, we're on a little cricket group. They do a cricket show, Cricket Collective. And I said, that's it. It's New Zealand's game. No, the moment I pressed no. send, Kane Williamson was out and New Zealand lost four for 19. And by the time it got to the last two overs, it was uh, plain sailing again. It was an incredible game of cricket. Let's look at that power play then. And the word has been, look, uh, the, the games can be won and lost in the power play. That's either taking a whole lot of wickets or really accelerating your scoring. It almost seems like you, you're, better, you're better off just going hell for leather in, in those first five or six overs. And, and in terms of your run rate, whacking the absolute snot of it. Because we saw Hales in that just incredible batting where you, he's stepping right outside the, the crease here. He's letting Southie look at his stumps. Just so that he can turn and just smack it straight off the offside. As soon as you clear that, that those inner fielders, bang, it's to the fence. Yeah, but if you look at the break, the scoring breakdown, it was almost identical. I mean, I don't know if it's right in front of me, but you know, England were what, 48 without loss at the power play. New Zealand were 40 for two. Um, at the 15 over stage, I think there was a run between them. You know, it was it was even Stevens. The other thing is, is that the two spinners, there was two overs in the power play. Um, that, that Mitchell Santner bowled. Really smart captaincy from Williamson. And they didn't go for many. You know, there was that one really painful over for New Zealand that Southie went for 16 or something. But, you know, in the main, the problem, and the, the reason this competition has been actually really interesting is that the ball hasn't quite dominated, but it was swinging, there was variable bounce, and it was a little bit too paced. So it wasn't quite as easy. I mean, you know, if you look at that game, in it, there was, you know, you you decide upon the narrative after the result has been decided, yeah, true. right? In, England lose that game, and they'll look at the Moe Nally drop catch, right? New Zealand lost the game, so they'll look at the Joss, the Joss uh, Butler drop catch from Mitchell. But actually, there was other sliding door moments. Alex Hales, inside edge, back past his leg stump for four. That got him off the mark. Now, he gets castled by, by Trent Bolt, rather than inside edges it, you've got a completely different game. Yeah, true. Because so much of that match was set up by the base that had been set in place by Butler, who top scored, and Hales, who also went past 50. Apart from those two, only one batter went past 20 or reached 20. So, yeah, power play is important for sure. But I'm not sure it's quite as easy as just stepping away and smashing the ball. Because, again, if you look at the, the, the way that both teams set up, they're completely different. New Zealand, five bowlers, all bowled four overs. England, Moen Ali bowled one over. He went for four runs and he was getting turned. But as soon as the matchups didn't work, he never bowled again. And England used seven <laughs> different bowlers and they used that to their advantage. So the game really has moved on. Um, and essentially, it wasn't the first six overs. And I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't the first six overs that, won that, that decided the game. It was actually the last five in the second innings. John Norman is with us from Talk Sport. So that result, even though, of course, it's always painful to lose to your lot at anything, and we, know we, we fear what's going to happen with our mighty All Blacks or not-so-mighty All Blacks come twicking them. 
losing to you isn't actually that bad because both of us, you know, it's kind of like your enemy's enemy is your friend, isn't it? We both want Australia <laughs> out of here, yeah. don't we? And so it, it all unfolds from here. Australia go, are going to whack Afghanistan. I have no doubt about that. And they're going to hit 200. But is it going to be enough? We could almost probably afford to lose our, our next match against Ireland, which I don't think that we will. You've got Sri Lanka, which is probably the trickiest fixture. How does it unfold from here? Who makes the semifinals out of this group? Well, I think you're absolutely right. I think it was almost perfect result because, you know, you lost heavily, which meant that our net run rate went up a good chunk, meaning that, you know, the, the difference between England and Australia is large enough for Australia, even if they absolutely wallop Afghanistan, for England, just a victory over Sri Lanka should be enough to keep us above them. Then you have one game left to play. You've got to beat Ireland. But of all the teams in that t- division, and I say that as an England fan who's just lost to Ireland, I would say that you're be- of all the teams, you're best suited to be playing Ireland. You know, you've just been in Ireland. You've played them in three T20s, three ODIs in Ireland with a second string. You've won that competition. Ireland are out of the competition. So whilst they are, of course, trying to finish in the top four so they then qualify for the next T20 World Cup, it's not quite the same. The intensity won't quite be there. So they're there. And all you have to do is win the game. So uh, New Zealand, for me, they finish top of the group. They beat Ireland. They finish top of the group. And then they sit back with a cigar and watch Australia and, and England. Australia, it's really interesting because before the last games, them against Ireland, England today against your lot, I thought Australia were just marginal favourites to go through because they're going to they're gonna absolutely destroy Ireland and they're going to destroy Afghanistan. But... I just don't really rate this side. I think that there are major weaknesses with it. I'm not suggesting that they're not going to beat Afghanistan. I think they will. But it could well be a lot closer than you think. And either way, they are going to, essentially, they're going to have to hit 200 and then bowl Afghanistan out for 100. That's the kind of net run rate swing they need if England beats Sri Lanka. Saying all that, though, Sri Lanka beat England in the 2019 World Cup. Sri Lanka are coached by Chris Silverwood, who's just been sacked by England. And Sri Lanka have just won the Asia Cup. And if Sri Lanka beat England, they qualify. Wow. So it's going to be tough. All right, then. You have 60 seconds, finally, my friend, to explain to somebody who's just flown in from Jupiter how the net run rate bollocks works. On the clock now. Well, to be honest with you, I have absolutely no idea how that run rate works, which is, a sh- which is a shame because I'm a ticket editor at a national radio station in the UK. But I'll give it a very, very short go. Go. It's got something, it's got something to do with the difference between the amount of runs you've scored and the wickets that you've lost, i.e. you want to score more runs and you want to lose less wickets and it's the margin in which you have beaten the opposition. So if you beat them out of sight, uh, your run rate is improved by a lot. And if it's a real bum squeaker, then your net run rate doesn't move too much above the dial. And if you get absolutely thrashed, like Australia did against New Zealand, it probably costs you in one game your chance to defend your own title in your own country.